Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show where we are in the Totally Awesome Fishing Workshop. In the winter with no heater. It's cold. It's cold. You know what cold means? Yes, cod fishing in the winter, pike fishing in the winter. That's the two species that I'm looking for. Now, I sort of thought long and hard about uh, how many tips I'm going to pass on you know, to you guys out there on YouTube. I thought, you know, just do they really appreciate it? And I'm sure some of you do, because you write to us telling us all the wonderful fish you've been catching using some of our tips and techniques. But hey, I should be keeping just a few secrets back, shouldn't I really, just for myself? All right, okay, just one more, just one more. Now, most of you out there freshwater anglers will be familiar with these things, yes? It is a bag of trout pellets. There we go. Nice dark ones. Now, there's loads of different pellets on the market that you can buy from the tackle shop. Just, just carp pellets, regular fish feed pellets, but these ones, these are all very, very dark. That means they've got a high oil content. Now, I have been working with this stuff for, I suppose I've been working with a certain type of oil for 12 years, the last 12 years. Definitely with the shark fishing and with bottom fishing as well. I've been trying different, you know, baits and techniques and stuff like that and sort of keeping it to myself found a way of turning these, these pellets, into, yes, this stuff. That is absolutely pure, unadulterated fish oil that I found a way of processing from pellets to that stage, okay? So that's really thick, gunky oil. I call it, I don't know what to tell you or not, R-A-P-T-A -A oil, Raptor, Pike, and if it would teeth eat it, sharks love it. Sharks go to cuckoo land for this stuff. I can, I can tell you that now. So how do I do it? Well, I get that processing system, which I keep to myself as a secret, and I put some other little ingredients in there. I've been doing it for a long time now. And this stuff is really, really good. Now, years ago, let's say 40 years ago, when I used to do a lot of dead bait fishing, static dead bait fishing in lakes, big gravel pits, stuff like that, for... Well, we were looking for big doubles and 20s, you know, that, that period of my life was uh, a 20 pound pike, it was a very big pike. And we'd be using herrings and mackerel, and we would always either pump them up with pilchard oil, full of pilchard oil like this, and this ain't pilchard oil, no one that we know of is even marketing this oil yet. We used to use oil, and it's really successful in the cold or winter months. And you could use it either covering on the outside, or you could use it injecting in the inside but of course with a hypodermic syringe you can also inject air into it and pop them up as well now i do a lot of sprat fishing twitching with sprats as you know purely because i like fishing that way it's mobile not much gear you know on with a knapsack camera bag off we go we go fishing with a bag of sprats but this oil really has been adding a little edge to my fishing for the last 10 or 12 years okay you want to learn more you want to learn more oh yeah you do let's check it out now right here we go. I am kneeling down, that's right. In fact, the desk is not under my chin. I'm kneeling down. Now, what we used to use years ago was a hypodermic syringe like this. I think we used to get them from the chemist. And you can, you can have a hypodermic needle and they're kept in a little protective tube like that. Now those, because they're so fine, I guess they come in different grades now. I don't know, these are brand, brand new ones. Um, we use these for injecting air and popping the baits up off the bottom. So if you put oil, like a thick oil, like this special raptor oil we're making here, through there, eventually it will congeal and clog up that needle. So use the needle, should you want it, for your air, for filling them, popping them off the bottom, and just use your syringe here, yeah, for putting the oil into the mouth of the fish. And then you can also, I'll show you in a second, Use cotton buds as well, that can also push the oil in. And you can smear the outside with one of these little cotton wipes. I think they're women's makeup. Ugh. Why do they put that muck over their face? I don't know. I'll tell you what they won't put over their face. Oh, raptor oil. If you use, I've been doing this for some time now, just take your syringe out. And this oil's all absolutely pure, straight, straight fish oil that we produce is that rubber plunger, which obviously pushes everything in, then slides up and down inside that very, very easily. Because the oil here, untainted, straight out to the fish's guts and livers, 
and it's thick so if you have it too thick on a cold day it will in fact sort of congeal into the center of the syringe and always wash out in warm soapy water when you finished okay so now you can see if I just put the end of it in there and I draw the tube back up like this there we go keep a, a rag handy and I'm just trying to show you the consistency of this if you can see this I'm going to put in this rag and then throw the rag in the bin now it comes out in drips or you can give it a good squeeze and it comes out in a big big jet put that out of the way now we're going to use this on a sprat which is one of my favorite baits for twitching or indeed ledgering let me show you how it's done okay so i'm using the very famous made famous by the totally awesome fishing show our twitching rig of a tail hook of the vb hook big hook and a bait holder and just a single carp hook this one happens to be offset and a single shot there that's that's all i'm using is our standard twitching rig now before i put that that sprat on there which i normally would just clip on there what you can do is what it says is take some of the oil you don't have to have a big big amount of it you just need a dip of it but what you need to do is open now i hope you guys are going to see this open the hinge jaw of your bait it could be a dead bait an actual dead bait it can be um herring it can be mackerel it can be sardine it can be smelt it can be anything now if you take that cotton bud you can see it opens the jaw hinge there and i want to push right down into the body cavity right i'm opening it all up twisting it don't push it too hard i go right back down it's so i can feel it going look how far that's going down yes yeah, pop right into the stomach now i'm just going to measure that from there to there watch <laughs> out come all the guts and gunk and his gills pull those out then i can put my syringe of raptor oil down inside there squeeze away and in well, just so you know it's going in it's going in doesn't look like it's going in it's going in slowly 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 okay that's dripping out now all over my desk and of course what you can also do you could if you wanted leave that in there snip that off if you wanted but that oil has now got you know right down into the body cavity of that then all I can do is turn it over as we have done in our twitching sprat films before put the single hook in through if you see that the bottom jaw but bring it out absolutely centrally if you can they are right on that skull that's a holding point when you cast a lot of guys say oh my sprats keep flying off we well, are casting too hard and you've got to get it so that, that you can see bang on the center and the bait holding hook again don't bend it like this keep it dead straight now that look at my fingers absolutely swimming in oil but you've got the addition of using these little cotton wipe ladies hand wash things or what do they do with them dip it in or just dip some into the oil and you can smear that right over the bait like that give it a dab over get some more on there and that one is we say all ready to go now chuck that down there that if you put it out nice and straight is how it should be obviously my hands are now covered in oil not a problem but what i want to do folks i want to show you exactly what these look like in the water now in the water as i lower this down i'm going to do it in my fish pond because there's no ripple on it i'll show you out there as I lower this down into the water, you should be able to see the oil absolutely careen across the surface and you'll realise just how strong a concentrate this oil is and what an attractor it is. Let's get out there and show you what it looks like. Now, I hope you're going to be able to see this. There is my sprat. I'm just going to put it in by this leaf and you should be able to see. Look at that oil. That is absolutely... <laughs> I love this stuff and so do the fish look at that fish oil pumping out that is raptor oil the best fish oil i've ever used in my life and we've been perfecting it for some time now if i just jiggle that look can you imagine what it's like twitching a bait with that oil on there look at it and it's obviously it's all natural fish oil we're not going to say which species it comes from that's our totally awesome fishing secret but folks 
that is phenomenal oil it is pumping and pumping and pumping all across the surface all through the water that is telling other predators come and eat me now hang on a second you might ask yourself what would I do twitch it well listen it works twitches it works really good as a static bait but I want to show you what you can do with that hypodermic syringe to what we call pop a bait up when it's in the autumn in the winter and there's a lot of leaf and detritus and rubbish on the bottom you cast your sprat out and it sinks in amongst the leaves and you don't know that so what you want to do is move the shot about four or five inches up and then pop it up a little bit I'll see if I can show you close in here and you can actually see that if you fill this with air it pops up puts it right in the face right in the vision and don't forget not only can they see this they can smell it as well oh, yuck. okay guys here's our sprat I've taken the needle out of the safety sheath I've got the needle just there now I'll put it on top of that lid so you can see I don't hook it yet now I don't push this down there because that might burst the body cavities that I want to trap some air into so I don't do the oil from the inside I need to put it on the outside but what I do is I just inject this we used to do this 30 40 years ago uh, blow straight up you see it blows straight up turn him over gently I'll go down by the tail first and just watch that skin there you can see it blow up three or four times and try and fill the body cavity with air okay then on goes I don't squeeze the air out on goes the VB hook and then this time I keep the shot literally about six inches from the bait there I want it to pop up then I just gently using my oil even on the same rag just cover it with a bit of oil doesn't take much we say about raptor oil a little goes a long way let's get that puppy in the water if you look when I lower this sprat into the water even with this wide angle camera you should be able to see the oil absolutely pouring off that sprat now the thing is if in the winter you have your sprat on the bottom you'd be laying it amongst these leaves but you can see here that that is popped up with air and is actually floating tail first up in the water exactly where the pike can see it and the other thing is the wire is green wire and the shot all lays nicely on the bottom and when the pike picks a bait up he just has to move that shot so there you go if you want extra pike in the winter use your hypodermic needle and pop that bait full of air so there I've given away my ultimate secret tip, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't just work for pike, it works for catfish. If you mix it in your bait with carp, yucky, 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 it works for carp as well. It works pretty well for everything, but predators seem to love it. And especially sea fish, oh, oh, oh. smear some of this stuff on your sea baits, it doesn't matter what it is, it enhances in its all natural fish oil. A lot of work to extract that, but I don't mind doing it. And there you go see how we go now how are we going to convince you even further well i'm pretty good at catching things with big teeth so what about this thing some nice blue shark fish wouldn't it they go crackers they go absolutely bonkers for this fish oil oh you want to see a bigger shark oh in britain from a tiny small boat a 17 foot wilson flyer a thresher shark funny you should mention that only recently we caught one this big
That's a pretty big lump to be catching uh, out of the English Channel. But of course we can change species with our tiny 17 foot Wilson flyer boat. And we can go down to the North Cornwall coast, totally on the other side of the country. And, oh, another 500 pound pool beetle shark. Oh, second one I've actually had the lead on. The second one. Check this one out. Need I say more? There's no more of an ultimate predator than a shark, except pike. Yeah, but they're freshwater, aren't they? Would they like this oil? Well, they might, because it is a, dare I tell you, freshwater-based fish oil. Hmm. Let's go down to the uh, Dorset Stour. If I'm going down there, I'm going to give it a go. I've only got a couple of hours. I've got a long drive. I'm just going to try and catch a pike. Now, under conditions that I would not normally be fishing. It's low it's coloured, it's right stale and off, and I was no way I would put in 30 quid of the petrol and drive all the way down there for this normal day. But I've got that much faith in this oil, I'm sure I'm going to get a take of something by smearing it with oil, injecting some inside, I'm pretty sure, even in coloured water, they can smell it. Well, I don't need to think it. Graham, you've been doing it for 40 years, buddy. We know it works. See what you think, let's get fishing. Okay, well, I'm down on the river, all set up. Got my my twitch sprout there, and he's coated in oil. He's injected with oil. He's pumped up with oil. He is really pumped up, and I'm pumped up as well. There is a slight tinge in the water, exactly what I wanted to try and see, you know, if we can actually pull a pike or two out under conditions that wouldn't be really favourable. You know, they want it really clear visually. The pike, it's always best, but with his secret fish oil, man. We could get lucky. Let's get cracking on and see if we can't pull one for you. So we got hit then, boys. Yeah. Fish on, fish on. I don't think it's a big one. And they can't all be big, can they? Oh no, he's not bad. Oh, oh geez, he's not bad. This is this is a good fish. Notice how quickly I changed my mind. That's unbelievable. It's like a woman changing my mind like that. Oh, 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 it's a jump, he's out of the water. He's taking me downstream, he's taking me downstream, I don't want to go into snags. No snags, please, we're British. He's got me, is he? No, he's kicking. Oh, let's hope he planes out. Go right across the other side of the river. Let's try if I can crank him in again. This this is a nice pike. I thought it was about four pounds. It's not. Just got to hope that one of those hooks is loose outside. Oh yeah, nice fish, nice fish. Right, guys, if I can get down to him. It's a good fish, nice fish this one. Oh, I'm out of extension on my net. <laughs> totally toast. Always lifted it vertically. <laughs> I like this oil. I like this oil, people. Look at this one. I like the oil. That fish goes, I'm guessing, about 12 pounds, ladies. You tell me, it might go 13. 
12 or 13 pounds. But let me show you something in close up just very quickly here. Now then just underneath here, hope he doesn't flap, you'll see these little holes as well in the bottom of the drawers. Now I believe they're also helping with the scent there, but the main scent is here in these two channels just in front of the nostrils there. I don't think you're going to be able to pick those up. Just in there, that's a scent. That's where they pick that scent up. Keep them in the net, then just let them recover and let them slide out the net. Away he goes. No problem at all. Nice cold water. <laughs> that's what I like. A plan when it comes together. I knew that oil would work in this off colour water. What a fish to get. I suppose he was. He could have got 11, 13, somewhere between those two. So I guess. And even 12 pounds would be fair. Whew. Get some more sprats oiled up. Guys, I just had the absolute softest of bumps. I think it's a really small pipe. And I've dropped two others as well. See if we get lucky on this one. Yeah, fish on. It's a jack. Bit small from the other one. Here he comes. Oh! I'll tell you, when I get this size, it's liable to be eaten by another pike. There we go. Oh! Now we've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous. Lovely little fresh jack pike. He's, he's just toasted that straight down the hatch. So he obviously was hungry and enjoyed the oil very much. It was very much to his liking. So it just goes to show you, even small pike like that oil. Right, that's another end of Totally Awesome. We've made the oil for you. We've gone out, caught a couple of pike. One was a real nice one at 12 pounds. Am I going home yet? Hmm, no. Well, there you go, guys. That's a freshwater predator on it as well. You've seen those three sharks. Two 500s, 120 pound blue. You know, what can I say? Predators love it. Hopefully, I can keep producing the secret oil here. And don't forget, people go, I know what's in it. No, you don't. No, you don't, you silly people, because I'm the one that boils it now. And I know what additives I put in there. And it's pure fish oil. Till next time, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Good luck with the predators. <laughs>